my friends, and welcome back to r and Sports, home of the road show. I'm your official voice of youth high school and now collegiate sports, Chad Ricardo. I got a special guest in the building, head coach of Old Dominion Football, ODU coach, Ricky Ronnie. Coach, thank you very much for taking a moment with us here today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Now, Coach, as we take a look at uh, at your last position, you, of course, were the offensive coordinator quarterbacks coach at uh, Penn State. Now, at Penn State, you're competing for national championships every year. You're in Happy Van Valley. You've got hundreds of thousands of adoring fans. You're working with the best and brightest student athletes from across the nation each and every year. To many, that's a dream job in and of itself. I got to imagine that it took a special opportunity for you to walk away from there. Why ODU? Yeah, no, you're 100% correct. It definitely took a special opportunity. I mean, you know, Coach Franklin is a great friend of mine. He's actually the godfather of my youngest child, and uh, <laughs> our wives are best friends. Um, my wife is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, um, you know, and, and I, I have a unbelievable amount of you know friends there and and you're right it, it, it was a special job I, I mean some would say i had the greatest job in the country um but when you look at old dominion you know you look at a it's a diamond in the rough i mean there's unbelievable talent here um not only in uh, the 757 but throughout the state of virginia down in north carolina and, and up into the dmv area um, where we recruit really hard you know we have great facilities here already and you know our fan support is unbelievable at one point they had 60 straight sellouts here so i mean there's a lot of things here that you've just got to love and this was an opportunity that i just didn't want to pass up and you know there have been other opportunities that you know i did pass up uh you know interviews turned down and things like that i just didn't feel like it was the right time but uh you know everything felt right about this opportunity you speak to your relationship with coach franklin what is it that you will bring from both that personal relationship and your time at Penn State? What are you bringing from there down to ODU? Well, I think it, it goes beyond even Penn State. You know, at Vanderbilt, uh, when I was there with him, you know, they had gone uh, to two bowl games in their history. They'd, they'd been two and ten two years in, in a row before we got there. Uh, we went to three straight bowl games. The last two seasons, we won nine games each and finished in the top 25. So. Uh, you know that experience showed me how to you know rebuild a program and, and and you know really you know ignite a fan base and things like that and then at penn state i was able to learn you know how to sustain things you know three out of the last four years won 11 games at penn state uh finishing the top 10 you know i mean so we've done some unbelievable things there so i was able to kind of get both experiences while i was there with them and, and he does an unbelievable job of uh organizing the coaches uh he does an unbelievable job of galvanizing a fan base um, and things like that and, and those things I was I was able to learn from him you know and, and also the motivate you know motivating players and, and showing players how you care about them and things like that so I you know I can't even begin to think about all the things I learned from him and and, and even categorize, categorize them in any way when it comes to building a program and the one that you're gonna build here you I, I, I saw that you mentioned Four pillars. I, I, I'll read them so that I make sure I get them right. Positivity, work ethic, competing, and sacrifice. Those are the four pillars that you plan to build off of. Why, as a as a collective, are those important? Yeah, you know, those are some things that uh, that we had at, at Penn State, and 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 I felt like they were just something that just carries on into a lot of different areas. You know, you know, positive attitude. You know, I want to be around people that are going to be, you know, we're going to see opportunity while others see obstacle. And, you know, I think it's obviously it's incredibly important in, in you know, today's society to be that. You know, anybody can point out the faults and, and the pit pratfalls and the issues that are going on in this country right now. I would rather see what we can do to make things better. You know, I mean, it doesn't take a, a wise man to, to see that there are some things wrong in our society. And, and obviously with, with the current pandemic and things like that, but, you know, somebody who's positive, somebody who has an attitude of how we're going to fix this. That's who I want to be around, you know, a uh, great work ethic, you know, nothing in this world has ever happened without a great work ethic. You know, I mean, people, you know, you always hear the, the expression, oh, that guy was born on, you know, he was born on third base or whatever. Well, those people, those, those people tend not to get home. 
You know, uh, those guys who have to work at it and work and grind and do those sort of things. Those are the people who truly feel satisfied. Those are the people who have great lives. Um, compete. You know, I tell a story all the time, you know, competing is just a way of life uh, for me and, and for my family. I mean, there are no 21 point rules in Madden in, in my household, you know, so I'm playing my two sons, you know, uh, you know, I'm going to we're going to play to the bitter end and those sort of things. You know, we random and played NBA 2K the other day, you know. It was bad luck for him. I got the 92 bulls, so Jordan was going to lay 67 points on him. I mean, that's just going to happen, you know. So, I mean, we're going to compete every single thing we do, you know, and then sacrifice. You've got to be willing to sacrifice some things, you know. I mean, you can't just think that, you know, you can just keep doing everything you want. Like, if I want to lose weight, guess what? i got to sacrifice hamburgers and things like that. Quite frankly, I'm not willing to sacrifice that right now. You know what I mean? So, I, I love sort of things but i also have to understand the consequences that come with that so you know one thing we've been talking about lately is, is three c's you know and as i've gone through kind of getting to know the team a little bit better and going through this pandemic and kind of evaluating things we're doing um i felt like this was a little bit more apt to our team so the first one is is care and i want our players to know that i care about them the coaches care about them i care about the other coaches um and they've got to care about their teammates. And, and and the other thing on care is they've got to care about football. You know, if they don't care about football and it's just something they do and they don't have a passion for it, we're going to struggle. You know, they've got to care about it and, and truly invest and care about it. You know, the next thing is going to be compete. I don't think that's something that you can replace. I think that's something that's going to be there, you know, for a long time. You know, that compete part that we already talked about is going to be critical. And then the last one is character. You know, I want to recruit men of character. I want to help, you know, develop and mold men of character. You know, people who are going to be, you know, they're not going to be perfect. Our guys are going to make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. But it's admitting those mistakes, hitting them full on and those sort of things. But then the other thing I want in that character piece is I want the guys to know that they're going to be able to be their own men. They're going to be able to have, you know, have some personality and things like that. You know, I don't want, I don't want robots. You know, I mean, I, that's that's not what we want out there. You know, we want some character and some guys who are going to be different and, and those sort of things. So, you know, those are kind of the things that we're, we're going into um, as we head into this season. I want to speak to you about a couple of uh, student athletes from here up here in the northern Virginia area in specific. I, I, I'll begin with Ricky Slade. Ricky Slade was one of the most dynamic student athletes that I've ever had the opportunity to see with my own two eyes. I was covering him from when he was a freshman all the way through his senior year. He did some truly special things. Five-star running back. You, of course, worked with him at Now, when he hit the transfer portal, someone was going to hit the lottery in getting Ricky Slade. How did it come about that you were able to convince him to come on down to the 757? Well, I think that it was uh, it, it was more about him and his family having trust in me and, and you know, knowing that I was going to push him to maximize his potential, um, that I, you know, I was going to take care of him and those sort of things. But I also, you know, I wasn't going to let him settle for second best and things like that. But I think it was a, you know, mainly a trust issue that I had with the family from all the way back in recruiting him uh, to when I was coaching him. And, and I think that that's probably the the, the main thing that happened there. Um, also, he knows our offense, right? So it's a, it's, it's a little bit easier for him to know, hey, um, I know I know what that play is called. He doesn't have to learn that part. So while he may have to learn, you know, nuances of this school and nuances of his teammates and things like that, he doesn't have to learn the playbook. He already knows that. So I think that that was a really cr critical part of it as well. And, and, and uh, you know, he knows he can be successful in this offense, you know, so – um, you know, we still got some hurdles to overcome in, in, in terms of, you know, things with, you know, but we're just excited to have him on board. You know, we know it, it, it increases our talent level and makes that room better. You've got to have as many running backs as, as possible. And at Penn State, we showed that, you know what I mean? I mean, you, you, that's a position you just have one. Uh, you're, that's probably not enough because those guys, you know, this day and age of playing fast and doing all those sort of things, you know, they're going to take a pounding from some of these guys. Obviously, you know quarterbacks. Far better than I know quarterbacks, but you know quarterbacks. Young man who's a recent commit, of course, is Lake Braddock's uh, Billy Edwards. For my, what it's worth, which isn't a lot, I believe that Billy Edwards is one of the mo more underrated quarterbacks in the DMV region. He's uh, He's got athleticism. He, he's got different arm angles that he can throw the ball from. The kid can wing it, and he's got moxie and bravado. What do you see in a young man, Billy Edwards, how can he grow and develop and eventually help ODU? 
Well, unfortunately, I can't talk specifically about uh, athletes uh, that are, aren't signed with us uh, due to NCAA rules. But I will tell you that, you know, for us, we want quarterbacks who are going to be smart. We want quarterbacks that are going to be, um, you know, winners and leaders. And, and we want quarterbacks that are going to be able to do both, you know, win with their feet and their arm, you know. And so, you know, those are things that are important for us. And, and that's something that we've, eval you know, evaluated for, you know, my, my money. You know, you know, a guy who is from that up in that area, Trace McSorley, um, you know, is one of the greatest college quarterbacks, you know, that I can I can remember over, you know, the last, you know, five, six, seven, ten years. You know, I mean, he was unbelievable. He was a kid who, you know, he was incredibly smart. He studied film, make he could beat you with his legs, he could beat you with his arm, he could be accurate with the ball, he could throw the ball deep. Um, he won games, he won close games. He was able to come back when he made mistakes. He could take hits, um, and his teammates loved it. You know, so those are that's kind of the prototype for us. Now, whether he's six feet tall, six foot four, you know, five foot ten, <laughs> I don't really care. That, you know, I mean, because quite frankly, all of our linemen are six seven, so they're going to have to throw in lanes anyway, right? So it's all about, um, you know, but he's kind of the prototype, and he's kind of the guy we're we're looking at. Trace McSorley got it done out there at Briar Woods. He, he was one hell of a quarterback. I'll get you out of here on this, Coach. Now, obviously, you have built this bridge into the DMV. No more uh, speaking of specific student athletes, but you built this bridge into the DMV. Why should young men from this area and really from across the nation, why should they take another look at ODU? Well, I think, number one, I mean, we have the youngest coaching staff in America. You know, 34.2 is our average age on our coaching staff. Um, but with that, you know, we've coached in 48 bowl games, two national championships, and 18 New Year's Six games. So we're, we're, we're an experienced staff. We're just young, you know, and I think that helps us connect. I help, I think that helps us, um, you know, recruit. But the other thing it does is our guys are – their main focus is developing these student athletes. They don't have a guy from 10, 15 years ago that they're able to rest on their laurels and say, hey, look who I coached all the way back then. Their main focus is, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna develop you. I'm going to make you the best possible player and make sure you maximize your potential all the time. So I think that that's something that's, you know, a, a big part of it. And then for us, you know, we're going to recruit this region. You know, we're going to recruit guys from Virginia. We're going to recruit guys from, you know, North Carolina. We're going to recruit guys from DMV. At, you know, up into, you know, Pennsylvania and Jersey, but that that's going to be our focus, you know, West Virginia, those sort of areas, that's going to be our focus. We want to win with these guys. And we know we can. We know we can win, you know, conference championships and, and, and battle for New Year's six day games and things like that with guys from this region. If we're able to get the guys from our region to stay here. You know, we can do special things. I mean, if you look at all these guys are going across all over the country and doing these amazing things. You know, if we get our fair share, we feel pretty confident in, um, you know, how many games we can win. My hometown of the 757 has a ton to be excited about. Coach, congratulations on, uh, on accepting this position and thank you for rolling with us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Great experience. And, uh, you know, anytime you want to come down, you're, you're more than welcome. You know, there's like, like you said, there's a lot of great things happening here, you know, so it's, it, you're always welcome back home. I'll take you up on that, coach. I'll see you soon.